So getting into volume two of Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. <laughs> I gotta say, there's a lot to digest with this volume because I feel like going from volume one was kind of like the building point, and now we're getting into volume two, which really establishes more of the foundations of what we need to know about the characters, but also something kind of struck me, and what I've noticed from the anime's perspective, because I'm kind of talking about the anime a little bit here, because now I'm technically well ahead of the anime, but the anime kind of presented volume one in a way that kind of gave something away to me, and that is uh, Mari, or I think that's how you pronounce it, which is Alia's older sister, I'm convinced she is the childhood friend that he met in the past. Like, she is the reason why he learned Russian. Like, I'm dead set on that. Now, of course, you've got to ask the question of, well, what about the eye color and the hair change? Well, I don't know much about, like, human biology from that point of view. Can eye colors and hair color change? Because the only thing that's changing in my hair is going gray due to stress, so... I don't think that has anything to do with her hair color change, and as far as eye color change, I've never had my eyes color change. I don't know. There could be something else at play there that maybe we'll we'll find out in the later volumes, but I'm just very adamant on it, mainly because of the interaction and the way she responded to him. And yeah, it, it just, it was so clear the moment I saw that episode in the anime, which is volume one, I was like sitting there thinking to myself, why didn't I guess this in volume one? And I think it's mainly because I was enjoying the story and everything else going on that I didn't notice that one thing that was should have been really prevalent to me. It's like going on a roller coaster and you're enjoying all these things going on and you didn't really notice that one thing to the left of the side of your eye. But that also being said, I do wonder if the light novels presented it in a way that it was a little bit more shrouded in mystery, while the anime has presented it as, like, clear as day of being like, um, excuse me, like, I'm, I'm not even questioning it, I'm just adamant, I'm like, yep, that's who she is, like, I, 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 technically, I don't know, because this is the only volume I've read so far as of doing this video, but I'm just like, yep, that's it, I'm, I'm not even questioning myself, I'm like, yep, that's who she is, she is the childhood friend. Like, done deal, I know it now. I thought maybe it might have been Alia, because it would have been an interesting spin to have, have her being the childhood friend, and then reigniting, and it kind of being that nice, touchy kind of feeling going thing. But at the same time, now it's like, okay, so he's, her older sister is the childhood friend, and clearly childhood friends don't win. And I've seen some people complain that once they've realized that she is the childhood friend, because a lot of people were thinking like me, and I don't know if it's just because some people read my tweets and they're like, oh, or not, but there is a bit of complaints of being like, okay, well, this is a little bit tropey now, because if she's the childhood friend, which I'm adamant on, <laughs> I'm not even questioning myself, then she's lost, because it's clear that he is going to hook up with Alia. So, yeah, it's like, you've done the whole childhood friend trope again in this series, but at the same time, her sister has no interest in competing against her. And see, that's the difference, though, in this, is that generally speaking, when you have these kinds of series, and it, it whether it's a harem or not, or just a small love triangle, it comes down to the childhood friend trying to win and failing. But I don't think she's going to try and win. I think she's going to be happy that her sister is happy and actually try and push them together. I think what will happen in the later volumes is they will both realize completely who they are, like, to each other, and then they will become close friends, and she will push him towards her sister. Like, she will really gravitate, because if you also look at the relationship between Alia and Mari, they are very close. And I think she only wants best for her sister. I don't think there's going to be some forced, dumb drama between the sisters trying to fight for the same man. I think, yeah, she she will have some crush on her on him, but I think she's going to put those feelings aside and be like, no, nope, you're going with my sister. You you's deserve to be together. You are happy together. And so, of course, the next question comes down to, and I know I will get this question of, okay, but what about her boyfriend? She said that she has a boyfriend. I think that's fake. I don't think she actually really has a boyfriend. I think it's either an imaginary boyfriend or it's something like she's like, I don't know, 
some inanimate object is her boyfriend. Like, that kind of seems like something she would do, just based on the kind of like, I'm trying to think of like an inanimate object that she would be like, this is my boyfriend. <laughs> and I'm thinking like, I was trying to think like, you know, how like, some guys do like waifus and husbandos for girls and all that and I was thinking okay like a pretend like relationship that she's made so guys don't like constantly hound her because I mean she is attractive but then I was kind of like thinking okay what inanimate object would she pretend to be a boyfriend <laughs> and I'm like oh, I don't know probably a teddy bear or something I mean she is pretty obsessed with those things she she like in the last episode of the anime she got a teddy bear that looks like apparently like Alia so I'm like maybe, maybe it's a teddy bear maybe she's named it after something and yeah she received it and I'm thinking to myself you know if they are childhood friends because she does mention about the dog incident I would say that was him so I think he's the one that saved her from a dog and I would think that maybe if I was using the inanimate object thing maybe it was a gift from him that's what my guess is again this is completely hairball I'm probably way off mark but I thought you know what I'll come up with something stupid the, th the thing that really matters to me is clearly they are childhood friends. I'm 100% on that. It's too obvious at this point. I feel like I, fe I feel like an idiot that I didn't even guess it in Volume 1. And it could be for a variety of reasons. It could be because maybe it was a little bit more shrouded in mystery. Or maybe I was just looking at all the window dressing. But in the anime, it was just clear as day. As soon as I watched that episode, I was like, oh my god, that, that she's the childhood friend. But then the question comes down to... How are their reunion going to play out? And that's the thing. Knowing the the punchlines isn't really well, like the angle. It's the journey. Like I want to see what it's how their relationship changes, how they grow together, and how she pushes them together. Because I'm adamant that she's going to push them together. That's just how I see it. It's one hundred percent how I see it. As far as like the whole situation, like oh, the guy that saved me from the dog, I would say it's him. And as time goes on, you'll learn more about the past, and that will be where the links will come together. Now you've got the sister, the whole sister complex. I don't think she's in love with her brother in a creepy sense. I think she just really cares about him and wants him to be happy and wants to push him in a way that makes him a better person. I think she just loves role-playing as this evil diabolical villain which you notice at the end of the volume and also what you notice is she pretends to be in love with him to Alia and I think that's to push Alia to be more confrontal about her feelings. I think the sister is really playing 4D chess here. Like, she's actually doing the same thing as what Mara would be doing as well. Like, they're both trying to push their, their brother and sister together to be a couple. I just do not see the sister being a weird one where it's like a sister complex. Like, oh, I'm in love with my brother. I want to be with him romantically, even though we're actually blood related. I do not see that being a thing. I think it would be too cliche, I just think it would be too tropey cliche, and I feel like the writer's trying to do something a little bit more fun with her, where she's role-playing that role to be the villain, and she's actually trying to push them together, and it's kind of funny, because now they've introduced a new character, which is the maid, that serves her, and technically serves him as well, but she mainly serves her, and at the end of it, she's like doing this whole, like, this is how villains work, and she's like, yeah, but villains lose at the end, she's like, yeah, so she's already, like, resided herself that she's a loser in this but I don't think she was ever trying to win her brother's affection from a romantic standpoint I think she just really cares about him maybe a little bit too much but I don't think it's an unhealthy sense I don't think it's from a hey I want to get it on with my blood brother like I don't think it's that I think some people are going to assume that because of the way she's role playing which I think is where she is probably one of the funnest characters in the story she's by far the funnest because of the fact that she is a masterclass troll in her role playing. So I really like her from that standpoint. But then also Mario I like from the standpoint of the connection that she has with the main protagonist. And the fact that I believe she is going to play a pivotal role in pushing those two together. Clearly there's also some issues that maybe she will resolve as well. 
about her past and maybe some stuff. There seems to be every character has their own issues that they need to resolve and their own inner turmoils. And I feel like the main male protagonist has the biggest ones, this whole like inferiority complex, feeling like he's failed, feeling like he has to live up to something. The same with Alia trying to live up to her own ideals of who she wants to be. And that's what a lot of this volume is about. I've not even said what has happened in this volume yet. And I've talked so much about the complexity of the characters and the interactions. That's what I mean by Volume 1. This is what I like about the series. The interactions. They're not boring tropes. And I do feel like some people are going to mask this as, as tropes because of some of the things that are used in it. The thing is, is anime tropes exist for a reason. Because they are things that are quite easy to put in a story and when you've got a romance comedy school setting yes you're going to have some tropes in there a sister a childhood friend rivalry a school setting then of course you're going to have like the student council you're going to have a lot of these cultural things as well as cliches all mixed in together because that's what a lot of these stories do it's hard not to avoid them it's all about how do you present them i understand a lot of people hate the whole childhood friend always losing but I think the issue with childhood friends is not that they lose, but they try to put them in a race that they know they're never going to win and try and pretend that they're going to win. And that's what I'm hoping this series doesn't do. do. I'm hoping what it does is has her as a supporting character that helps push them together. Yes, there's a past, but I don't think it's going to come in conflict between the two love interests moving forward. And that's what I'm hoping for. Because I think the biggest issue with the trope, again, as a childhood friend, is, as I emphasize, and I'm repeating myself deliberately, is that she, most of the time, with these uh, childhood friends, is they're used as a rival. But they, you know they're going to lose, and so they get put into a race they're destined to lose. It's why I talk about a lot of other series like Darmanchi, where I get annoyed at series like Darmanchi. I know it's a very different series, but it does have a sort of a point that I'm getting to is that, and you could use, for example, Nisika actually as another good example, but they have a multiple cast of girls and you know who's going to win at the very beginning. So why have it drawn out for a billion volumes of the, them all competing against each other and pretending that they've got a chance when you know they don't have a chance? There are some mangas and light novels that do competition between girls and rivalries well one of those in my opinion would be cafe made terrace but in the sense of some other series they try too hard to make it feel like the childhood friend has a chance when you know they never had a chance and then they build a following that are all like oh but i want her to win and then they get angry when she loses and i like, come on you knew she was gonna lose so why put her in the race? And I don't think she's part of this race. I think Alia's sister is not part of the race. She is just a part of this journey that is going to help bring them together. That is just my opinion. I think the real challenges between their relationship is going to be something else. And I think it's going to be their inner turmoil. And something else is going to come up that is going to try and draw them away. And I think maybe that is some of their past not to do with the sister the older sister but something else i just feel like there's something else that's going to try and rip them apart and that's where the conflict's going to be but i also think it's part of his inner turmoil and his past and his inferiority inferiority complex that is going to do that so let's actually talk briefly about what happens in the volume because apparently i wanted to really talk about the characters itself honestly i think the real thing that kind of really stands out is the ending i think that's really the main thing that we need to talk about and really the only thing that we need to talk about is that there's other characters in the past that had an in a, a issue with Alia and him working together to go for student council position and so this girl didn't think he was taking it serious and so she did a debate and then realizing that oh he is actually taking it serious he actually made this choice himself this girl clearly thought that Alia is trying to steal him away but this is the thing though too is because of the fact that he has to pretend they're not related, I think that's going to add conflict. Because I think other people are going to see it as they were always meant to be together as a couple, because they kind of do act like a couple, the way they work together. But because no one knows that they're brother and sister by blood, 
people are going to be like, well, aren't you actually an item? And then people are going to come in between Alia and his relationship. I think there's some of that inner turmoil is going to be. Not the whole equation, but part of it. But the debate itself was pretty good and very well done. The thing that struck to me, though, it was the ending with the sister, his sister, where she talks about how he could have just completely demolished this chick, like straight away if he wanted to, but he kind of let it up, left it up to Alia to kind of do some self-developing. There's clearly some mystery behind him that he is like an absolute A-class, like, I wouldn't say evil manipulator, but he's very good at controlling situations, manipulating people to behave in a certain fashion, and I'm very curious to see where that goes and some of the past that has led up to that. Clearly, he's holding back his potential. She has noted that, saying, you know, you wouldn't beat me currently in your current form. Your final form is yet to be evolved. Like, clearly, there's some things that he's got to resolve to be able to come forward and really show himself. And I feel like he's kind of like Shiro from Log Horizon. Like, there's some very clever... Like, he's, he's much more intelligent that he's leading on. The lazy attitude, I think, is part of his inferiority complex. And so I think some of that has to play with why he's behaving in the way it is. There is obvious hooks in this volume that have hinted about family issues. And who's, like, leading the family line and all that kind of stuff. So I really, really want to see more of that. And I'm very it's very obvious that we will find out he's like the prodigy that was one thing i wrote down on my notes was that they emphasized on him being a prodigy a genius those kinds of things so yeah i mean other than that of course you've got the the date not the day those kinds of things i called it where they go out they have some food they chat they're having their like moments together and a lot of those parts in the volume are just a lot of them talking to each other having their highs and lows, him communicating, him sometimes saying good things, sometimes saying stupid things, I will say the funniest part of it all is the fact that he actually, when she's getting really nervous before the debate, he's like asking about the e-cups, and I, I knew straight away what he was trying to do, I was like, okay, he's clearly trying to like take her mind off of things, and she's getting really ruffled up, like her feathers and everything, metaphorically speaking, I'm not saying she's an actual bird, and He's just relaxing her. He's taking her mind off of things. But it's still funny that he brings it up. And she's just kind of like, well, how, how do you even know if I have an e-cup? And then he's like coming up with a story. And she she clearly knows he's making it up. She, he, she clearly knows he knows something or has spoken to someone that knows too much. It's just funny. And then the fact that she said at the end, close enough. It's like, ooh, I love, that's what I mean. I love the way she says things in Russian. I mean, that's the whole point of the story. She says, she sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. But I do love those little moments where she will say something in Russian, and now he knows, and so now his mind is racing, and he's going, wait, they are close to e -cup? So, <laughs> I love this volume. I love the first volume, I love the second volume, and I'm very interested to see where the story goes from here. But honestly, I feel like I've barely talked about what's been in the volume itself, and I may do a follow-up video at some point, maybe a character analysis video or something, because I don't want to drag the video out too long. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of volumes one and two? Again, of course, you've got my first volume review, you got my second volume review right here, but I'd love to know your thoughts just in general, because as the journey goes on, it's a complete package to me. I don't like measuring volume to volume, and that's something I've seen people say. It's like, oh, but this volume is better than that volume, and I'm like, I don't care. I care about the whole journey and looking at the high, like, yeah, the highs and the lows, but I don't judge it as, oh, you had one bad volume, flop series, and then that's the end of it. Like, you're going to have some volumes that are better than other volumes, and some volumes that are much more worse in your eyes, because that's just reality. It's a roller coaster. But I'm not going to judge the entire series based on, like, a little bit of a low. There's sometimes always going to be a low before you go up with a real good steep high. It's like a roller coaster, and I'm expecting those. So, again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of this volume? If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more anime content, and and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.